Okay, uh, we're going to start uh, describing our motions with velocity time graphs. Um, again, there are multiple ways to describe a motion. They're all like a language. The more fluent you become in any language, uh, the easier it's going to be. Uh, we can use words like constant positive velocity, constant negative acceleration to describe a motion. Uh, we can use diagrams like uh, leaving a picture where it is every one second, seeing what the diagram looks like in terms of spacing and direction. Uh, we can use numerical information like 20 miles per hour, 10 feet per second, 10 meters per second, etc. Uh, we can turn all that information into mathematical equations. Uh, and then we can also, since we're looking at changes, graphs are a great way to compare one change to another. Now, we are looking not at position compared to time, but velocity compared to time. And velocity is the rate at which you change your position. So it's actually a rate of another rate. And it turns out that the slope is going to be delta v, the change of velocity, divided by delta t, the change of time, that is going to be the acceleration of the object. And so it's not telling us how fast we're going, it's telling us how, what's the rate at which we're getting faster or getting slower. Okay, as a quick reminder, and this is a tricky part for everybody the first time, since accelerations are based on force, if you want something to speed up, say to the right, that means you need to push it to the right. That means the acceleration also needs to be in the same direction. So if we consider it to the right positive, if we're moving in the positive direction and getting faster, the only way we can do that is if our acceleration is positive. Now, if it's moving to the right and we want it to slow down, then we're going to want uh, our acceleration to be against the motion. So in that case, we'll have negative acceleration. Now, if we're moving in the negative direction to the left, that's the motion velocity is the, what we see. It's the motion to the left. Uh, and then we are speeding up. That means we have to get pushed or pulled in that same direction. So this is negative velocity. That means this is negative acceleration. Now, if we're moving to the left and we want to slow down, then the acceleration is actually going to have to be against the motion. So that's actually positive acceleration. So it's possible to speed up with negative acceleration. It's also possible to slow down with positive acceleration, which is not the common usage of those words. OK, so the graphs. <clears throat> uh, we're just going to sketch some lines of the various graphs. Again, it's velocity. It's how our speed, the numeric value of our velocity is changing. Uh, on the first one, A, we're moving at a constant speed in a negative direction. So now in the position time graph, that would have showed up as the direction of our slope. Here, it's all about this line right here, the zero line. Anything below zero is in the negative direction. Anything above zero is in the positive direction. If the speed is constant, that means it's the same for all time periods. So negative direction, below zero, constant speed means a straight line across as time ticks on. Now, it's tricky because in the position time graph, that means we're stopped. Here, it means there's no acceleration. So we're not getting faster, we're not getting slower, but we are moving in the negative direction. Uh, so that's A. Uh, if you look at B, the only difference in B is that we are moving in the positive direction with constant speed. So I have to be above zero, but I have to be a constant or flat line. Acceleration is zero, but we are moving. Okay, now in this next one, we're moving in the positive direction. So again, that's this is the key point. We're going to be above zero, and we're getting faster. Now that means the numerical value of our speed must be getting higher. The slowest possible velocity would be zero. So if we are getting faster, our line has to go away from zero. So notice that the line went up, slanted upward. Now in B, if we're moving with a, uh, and that's uh, A is the blue on that one, if we're moving with a negative direction, that's going to mean below zero. 
and then speeding up again we need to go away from zero so the numbers this number down here is going to be larger than zero so it's going to be like this and it should be a straight line it should be a line with a slope and again the slope of that line is our rate of acceleration it's not how fast we're going it's how much speed we're picking up say 10 meters per second for every second that we move <clears throat> now we're moving in the negative direction and we're speeding up so the acceleration there would be negative notice that that is a negative slope okay some more uh, moving in a positive direction and slowing down okay again uh, I'll go with the red here for a positive direction means above zero and slowing down means we need to head toward that zero velocity line so it needs to be something like this now keep in mind the velocity is positive and the acceleration is negative and therefore we are slowing down they're opposites uh, MB we're going in the negative direction so again that's below zero and we're slowing down so we need to get a number that's smaller and smaller and smaller or closer and closer to zero so it's got to be something like this now that's a negative velocity but the slope is positive so the acceleration is positive so again those are opposites so we're slowing down okay, as long as those two are opposites we get slower when they're the same in terms of their direction in terms of their sign we'll get faster okay so now instead of saying slowing down speeding up they give us a direction for velocity and a direction for acceleration Oh, in A, we're moving with positive velocity. So again, here's zero. This is positive. So it's going to be above zero. And at the same time, we're moving with negative acceleration. Now, those are opposites. So we're going to slow down. I need a negative slope. All of those things lead me to a line that looks something like this. Now, in all these cases, I'm keeping it simplest by stopping before I reach zero. Keep in mind, there's no reason why something can't move through zero it could stop and turn around it could stop and bounce off a wall uh, so it could change direction too uh, I'm just trying to show it before it does so uh, B <clears throat> and B we're again uh, positive velocity so again we're above the line with B so uh, the B is a red and positive acceleration now those two match so that means we need to get faster. That means we need to go away from zero. That means we need a positive slope. So all of those things lead us to a line something like that. Now in this case, these two points where they cross, that is when they are at the same velocity at the same time. This one's been slowing down. This one's been speeding up. At that point, they're not necessarily in the same place but they're going the same speed, the same uh, magnitude of changing their position. So again, it's multiple things that you're looking at at one time. You're comparing an acceleration and a velocity. You have to know the difference between those two. You can't let your mind take the first thought. Uh, it's not as simple as just, oh, it should look like this. It is really a mental analysis take the time to think it through and work on those what each piece means and how they have to go together once you have it the language is the same all the time but until you have it it probably won't make as much sense as it needs to okay we'll continue to look at what we can get from a velocity time graph in our next episode